The following has very graphic and sexually explicit information. Viewer discretion is advised. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a Son of Thunder video again. Just released the secret documents that Watchtower tried to keep covered up, which detailed the cover-up of a pedophile, which led to the Montana judgment of $35 million against Jehovah's Witnesses, has just been released by the attorneys that were representing the victims. Stay tuned. Quite possibly the largest jury award ever from Jehovah's Witnesses to a victim was handed down in a small 1300 person town named Thompson Falls, Montana, which now tops the $28 million award given to Candace Conti in 2012 for similar child abuse cover-up. And the secret documents that Watchtower does not want you to see has been made available thanks to an attorney named Neil Smith who represented the victims in Montana. Now even though these secret documents have now been made public record, I can't show them to you or link them in the description because they do leave the address and phone number of the victim on the paper, so I'm not quite sure if that's going to be changed in the near future and the details are sketchy. But for now, I'll show you what I can show you while keeping the victim's information confidential. So there are five exhibits and we have all five. And now the attorneys for the Watchtower gave several reasons why they didn't want these released. One of which being that they said the victim's attorney wanted them so he could release them to the media and in turn, the media and others could harass and embarrass Jehovah's Witnesses. Such a decision is nothing other than idiotic. So this is the perpetrator, Maximo Reyes. He was disfellowshipped in 2004, reinstated in 2005, and that's when he started molesting his next victim. And this is where the lawsuit gains a lot of strength. So as we're looking at this formerly secret document made in May 2004 by the elders to the branch regarding Maximo's disfellowshipping. It's important to keep in mind that the first victim who reported this reported it back in 1998 where nothing happened. The allegation was swept under the rug by, you guessed it, the two witness rule. Now according to the details written by the elders, I'll read it, it says one of the victims came forward and informed two elders of the sexual abuse of himself from the age of 8 years to 12 years old. The abuser was his stepfather. He also related that his sister had informed him of similar sexual abuse from 10 years old to about age of 15. Both related a pattern of ongoing sexual abuse which started shortly after the marriage. When Maximo was confronted by the investigative committee, he denied all allegations. Two days later, when confronted by his wife, he admitted to fondling her son on three occasions over a two-year period. The judicial committee all agreed the testimony of the two victims was more credible. We felt Maximo was unrepentant based on the seriousness of the sin, his willingness to confess, and that it was carried on over a long period of time. We also felt the purity in the children and the reputation of the congregation needed to be protected, and now it quotes a Watchtower magazine. So this is May 7th. Let's rewind back a couple of months to March of 2004 and this is the letter received by the victim who initially reported back in 1998. So the first reported victim who wrote this letter in 2004 says that she was being abused back in 1998 when she was nine years old and she alleged that they did nothing because of the second witness rule. When she wrote this two-page letter on March 19th of 04, she was detailing all of the assaults she endured at the hands of Maximo Reyes who was her stepfather as well as all the assault on another girl. And this is the second page of that two-page letter that she wrote. And like I said, I don't want to link the documents in the description because her address and phone number are on there, and I'm not sure that should be published even though that is now public record. I feel like it should have been censored. And here is the shocking response by the elders after they received that letter from the first victim, Holly, which she is named in here. They wrote that the community nor the authorities are aware of this matter. The members of the congregation are also at this time unaware of what took place. The only ones that we are aware of that know are Maximo, the perpetrator, his wife, and mother of the children. The victims feel disgust toward Maximo. And then on June 
the 16th, 2005, the elders reinstated this pedophile. Now this letter that we're reading here, Exhibit 3, was a response to the branch about nine days prior, which also has been released to the public, and it's Exhibit Number 4, which just asked for exactly what they gave them, asking if anybody knows about this, basically if they are all clear to be able to cover it up. Think about the apostate-driven lies and dishonesties that Jehovah's Organization is permissive toward pedophiles. I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? If anybody takes action against someone who would threaten our young ones and takes action to protect our young ones, it's Jehovah's organization. We reject outright such lies. Isn't that something? And just in case you think this is some isolated incident, here's page 72 of the Secret Elders Handbook that you're not allowed to know about that details exactly how they are supposed to cover up child abuse, specifically sexual abuse. If a child doesn't have a witness to their abuse, then they leave it in Jehovah's hands, or which means they do absolutely nothing. And just to quickly address if the two witness rule is scriptural, it might be for theft or something petty. However, the scripture says regarding rape or sexual abuse, you do not need a second witness, as this account tells us of the damsel who was raped Look at the last verse, it says, nobody could hear her cry, and the man who raped her is to be put to death. So that means she did not need a second witness, and neither should a kid. I mean, that's common sense, but if you need it in black and white, there it is. Uh, anyone who truly knows Jehovah's Witnesses recognizes that all of these accusations are completely ridiculous. Well, there you have it again. Not pitiful by any means. What a sorry, pathetic web of lies and deceit Watchtower Society finds itself in. Not miserable. That governing body and everything about that religion is nothing but lies and deception. So if you're in it, find a way out. We have resources out here. Go to vastapostatearmy.com. The person behind that is Trisha Frangia. She's excellent and puts in so much work to give you the resources you need to get out look up the protests there's so many of us you're not alone in there and we can help you out thanks so much i'd love to see your comments and what you think about all this and always remember that i am son of thunder and i'm here to keep watch for you until next time